there everyone and welcome to the Pin Pin Podcast. My name is Megan Nodecker and I'm a knitwear designer from Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as Pin 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 and on Ravelry as Knit Pin Pin Pin. Um, welcome back if you are a returning viewer and uh, thank you for joining me if you are new. Um, I hope you enjoy the things that I have to talk about which is knitting all the knitting stuff. <laughs> uh, it's October 24th today. Um, and it's great again. And it is the, this is the 38th episode. So that's pretty cool. Um, I've been, I feel like I've done a really good job <laughs> of being consistent with um, podcasting lately. And that is entirely because Georgia is in school. And yeah, I think it's good. I'm gonna roll. We're gonna roll here. <laughs> um, yeah, so this podcast is all about knitting and designing and other crafts sometimes, but usually not. <laughs> um, just a couple things to talk about before we get into the knitting. First off, I just started a knit along in our Ravelry group, which is Pip and Pin and I'll put all the links to everything um, down in the description box below. But the we started the Rainforest Knits. The, wait. <laughs> the Rainforest Knit Along. Um, and it is a knit along that runs up until the end of the year. So December 31st. Uh, and that is, you can knit any pattern from our new book, Rainforest Knits, um, as well as Cat Bells, the new release Cat Bells sweater, and our other release this year that we did back in the spring, which is the Mema cardigan. So any of those five patterns you can use in the knit along. Works in progress are allowed. Double dipping in other knit alongs is totally allowed. Um, there's a chat thread up right now on a Ravelry group, and I'll be putting in a finished object thread as well, and that is where the prizes will be um, drawn out of, or prize. I haven't decided how many prizes or what I'm doing with that yet. <laughs> um, I did want to say too, if you want to or are able to donate anything for prizes for um, knit alongs and things like that, just get in contact with me. I do hope now that I'm on a better schedule for um, podcasting, I re do really hope that I can do more knit alongs and giveaways and things like this in the future. Um, a couple other things. I have two trunk shows coming up. One is going to be at 88 Stitches out in Langley, um, and that's going to be on November 9th from 11 a.m. until 4. Um, and that's also kind of the wrap-up party. Right now they're doing a Pip and Pin knit along um, in their Ravelry group, so any Pip and Pin pattern um, with their using yarn from their shop and um, you can enter to win some prizes and I think we'll be doing the draws and everything um, during the trunk show and I'll be there knitting, I'll have books, I'll have patterns, I'll have samples so if you want to come try some stuff on or even just come and hang out and knit for a little while um, that's where I'll be on November the 9th so in a couple weeks and then on November 23rd I will be out in Surrey at um, Valley Yarn so from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m., I will be hanging out there again with my books and samples and um, you can come say hi <laughs> and see what, uh, see what I have there. So for what I am wearing today, I'm wearing two things. One is old and well-loved and one is new and well-loved. Um, take this guy. Maybe I'll, no, I'll take this guy out first. <laughs> we'll talk about that one in a minute. This one is my well-loved Harvey pullover, and that is a pattern by Hannah Baker. Um, and it's knit in the Fiber Company Cumbria in Scaffold Pike. And I use the deep worsted weight for the body. And then I accidentally bought the Fiber Company, the Cumbria Light, which is a fingering weight. Um, I accidentally bought some of that instead of more DK. So I just, held them double for the sleeves and it works out just fine. Um, they're kind of 
the sleeves are kind of a weird length and I'm always saying, oh, I'm gonna like, cause usually I roll them up like this. So I am thinking of just taking them back to three quarter sleeves cause they're kind of just right, right here, which is nice and fine. Um, but I feel like they either need to be really long or just a little bit shorter, or I just need to tack them down or something because I'm obviously, <laughs> I mean, I've this finished this sweater last year already and I haven't done anything to it. And it's my favorite sweater, like it's the, my most worn sweater by far, and I haven't altered it. So it's probably not gonna happen. <laughs> I'll just throw a few stitches in here and it'll be a rolled cuff. Um, I really love this sweater a lot. It's just a simple drop shoulder. This is like herringbone lace and then it's plain stockinette on the back. So it kind of have this high low thing just because of the way the brioche stitches pull up. Um, highly recommend this pattern. It's from an issue of, I think it was in an issue of either Knit Scene or Interweave Knits. I don't remember. I think Interweave Knits from a while ago, but you can get it on Ravelry. Um, yeah, and I don't know if I say this often enough, but <laughs> if you have any questions about um, the yarn I used or the pattern I used or anything like that, I do keep um, very good, I try to keep very good records on Ravelry. Um, so you can always look at my Ravelry projects and all the information you need is most likely gonna be there. Um, I also have my needle sizes on there, which I don't talk about a lot on the podcast at all because needle sizes are very personal. <laughs> needle sizes don't really mean much, honestly. Um, gauge is more important than needle size, which is why I don't talk about it. Your gauge on a size 7 needle is going to be different than mine anyways, so what does it matter? Um, the second thing that I'm wearing... We're just gonna jump into finished objects. <laughs> put it, I'll put it back on in a second. But this is my Courage shawl. Um, and I finished it just after, um, like maybe a day or two after I podcasted last time. And I have worn it every single day. <laughs> it goes with absolutely everything in my wardrobe. Um, I kind of steam blocked it once just so I could wear it that day. I think I was going out on Saturday and I really wanted to wear it. So I steam blocked it and it was good. But after I did like a true soak and a real good like wash and, and actually blocked it out, it just became big and lovely and amazing. And this is a The Courage Shawl and it is a pattern by Shannon Cook, one of her new shawl patterns. Um, and in the pattern, you use two solid colors, so the, the black and the white. Um, and then for these colored parts, I think she has you use some spin cycle yarns, which is that really slow kind of um, gradient-y yarn. I just use scraps. I just had some stuff lying around in my stash, and this all came from stash, actually. So the black is Madeline Tosh. It used to be a sweater that I frogged. <laughs> um, and then the rest is from Sweet Fiber. So this is Vintage Lace, Rose Gold, Sequoia, and Ochre. This is color here. And those were mostly just from, um, she does her like, every once in a while, she'll do a mystery trio uh, thing on her website where basically she just puts together three of her colors and it's a mystery. That's why it's called a mystery trio. <laughs> And I really love getting those when she has them because she's one of those dyers where I can, like any of her colors are just amazing. And I really like picking out, well, I really like that I get colors that I wouldn't necessarily pick out myself. Like the, the ochre is something that I probably would never pick up and say, oh, I love this, except now I've used it in two shawls and I wear it all the time so and they all like I mean if you've ever seen sweet fiber yarns before you know that it, they all kind of go together anyway so <laughs> it's very nice one the other thing that I really like about this shawl is it's big enough um for my shawl cuff <laughs> so I got this guy um this I think it's was a belt 
And um, these shell caps are made by Knox Mountain Knit Co. And I got it at, oh, where was it? The show they do in Cloverdale. I don't remember what it's called, but I picked one up last spring and I really like it, but none of my shawls actually were big enough to fit it. So now this one is a big chunky shawl um, and it works really well. I was gonna add tassels to this because I find the tassels kind of way down the ends and keep it on, um, but this is just working so well that I'm not going to. I also don't have enough yarn. <laughs> I literally ran out of every color. I have tiny, teeny, tiny little balls, except for the ochre, because I, I had a full skein of that and I didn't end up using the full skein. Oh yeah, I also um, altered the edging a little bit. I think I kind of just stopped reading the pattern after <laughs> for, the, for the border. Um, but I, well, I also shortened these sections a little bit because I ran, was running out of yarn, these, um, couple blocks here and then I was writing out of the black at the end and I had just enough of the rose gold to do a nice big garter rose gold border so that's what I did instead of I don't know buying more yarn because no I'm not gonna buy more yarn for a border <laughs> so we make it pink uh what else have I finished what else do I have to say about that nothing um <laughs> nothing Yes, something. This was my first time doing um, a whole project that had mosaic knitting because this all this color work is done by slipping stitches and doing mosaic knitting. So that was very cool um, and interesting. And I, I'm probably going to try and incorporate that in some designs at some point as well because I think it's a really nice way to do to do color work back and forth. And I'm not... I just, uh, I haven't done a lot of color work, stranded or otherwise, so I thought it was neat. <laughs> My second thing that I finished was a really quick little project. Um, I think I talked about this last time maybe, but I made this little headband. <laughs> it doesn't really look like too much right now because it's not on a head. Um, this yarn is Poppy Yarn and Fiber in Inishmore Erin in the London Fog colorway. So it's this lovely tweedy kind of light blue. Um, got it at Knit City <laughs> to specifically to make a headband. I really, all I did was, cast. I think I cast on like 22 stitches or something provisionally and then just knit for a while. <laughs> and then I kind of split it into two and then twisted them to make that little bow thing and then just kept knitting. And then when I got to the end, I just kitchen kitchenered it together. And so the edges do roll in, but because it's like, once it's on your head, it kind of flattens out and then it just looks like this nice little edge. Um, only 25 grams of yarn. So I still have a ton of this yarn left, which is awesome. It, I'm having some trouble. I think I made it a little too tight for me. Um, I really like how it looks. And I really like, it's cut pretty much exactly what I wanted. It just doesn't want to stay on my head. And I'm pretty sure it's a combination of it being slightly too tight, which I haven't blocked this yet. So maybe I'll try blocking it and seeing if that helps. Um, also, I kind of have a weird shaped head, I think. <laughs> Some people can just wear headbands and they stay on forever. I've always had problems with hats and headbands kind of sliding off. Um, I did wear it, what, for a day? For like a whole day and I had some bobby pins um, strategically placed and that seemed to help so I think I'll just give it a block and see um, I might try and do another one of these maybe like instead of doing it flat doing it like double and kind of doing this as a tube and so it, it'll be like double thick um, I mean, I have enough yarn, so I might just do another experiment and see which which style and make make it a little bigger and a little thicker and more like winter time. Um, Justin also kind of <laughs> not made fun of me in a bad way. He was just teasing me, but he's like, "Man, only a knitter would spend six hours making a kerchief, you know, that is supposed to be a two minute throw on and go kind of thing." And I was like, "Yeah, 
well, that's what we do. <laughs> Uh, and then the third thing that I finished, I finished a lot of things this week. Um, the third thing I finished are my October socks and I showed these last time. And these are just a pair of plain vanilla socks. Um, I'm doing the Grocery Girls Sock Bash, so this is my pair for October. Um, I think the theme was color work, but I didn't do any of that. <laughs> So this is self-striping yarn um, from Mud Punch Yarns, and it is in the colorway Cat's Pajamas, except it's missing a color. I talked about this last time. It, I just wasn't feeling the pink, so I kind of cut it out. Um, I cut it out of the striping pattern. <laughs> Only because it's fall. I think if I was doing this in a different season, I would have left it. You can see, where's the toe? On the toe on this one, there's a tiny, teeny, tiny little bit of pink there. Um, and then the green is Sweet Fiber, her super sweet sock in Starry Night, I think is what it's called. But I really, um, I really like these ones. I just did a, they're just plain vanilla socks with a little wedge toe. And these ones I did cut in an afterthought heel. I think I cut it in too short. <laughs> I think the foot is, these haven't been blocked yet, So, but I did try it on yesterday after I'd finished it. And I think I could have just done it a few rows up. I can always go back um, because when I do my afterthought heels, I always work a couple of rows before I start my decreases um, because I have a lot of a high instep, I think is what you call it. So it gets quite tight in this area. Um, so I always knit a few rows and then, and then do my decreases. I think if I, if it really bothers me, which honestly, I'm probably not going to do this, <laughs> but in case you're wondering how something like this would be fixed, um, I might, you could take out the heel and go back to where you kind of picked it up and just knit some more rows. And that will add a little bit of length here as well as making it a little wider here. So if it's something that really bothers me and I feel like spending a couple hours on a pair of socks, that I can do, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. <laughs> um, yeah, so those are, the, those are all the things that I finished. <laughs> I feel very accomplished. Uh, and because I finished so many things, I really don't have any works in progress. Um, I talked last week about Sam from How Me My Knitting, how she was talking about kind of capsule knitting and working on three projects at a time. And I think I'm going to attempt that, except for right now, I only have one of them cast on. <laughs> so I'll show you the one that I have cast on and then I'll talk about the other two because I have them, they're ready to go now. So I just haven't cast them on yet. So this first one, this is living in I'll show you this bag first because I really love this bag. This is from Starlight Knitting Society. And it's actually a bag that's made by um, Paradise Island. Really amazing, amazing, well-made bag. Um, I really like the, like the dark blue canvas and then this copper is just amazing. And it, this is shiny, <laughs> which is also great. <laughs> It doesn't look a little bit of sparkle um, in the bronze. And I just love their logo so much. I'm really excited to go there in the spring. Um, and then it has a zipper, like a really heavy duty zipper pocket on the back, which I also really like. And then it's just simply lined inside this Paradise Island there. And drawstrings, which I think is my new favorite. I really like the drawstring. <laughs> Anyways, in this bag is a project. And this is, oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm working with three yarns <laughs> at once. So I'll just show you the yarn first. This is some yarn I got from um, Fiddly Dye Works at Knit City. And this is her um, Superwash Merino Worsted in the Harper colorway. So it's this, it's one of those yarns that kind of changes on me all the time. There's lots of like taupe, it's very warm. There's a little bit of orange, there's some black and brown and and cream, I don't know, it's beautiful. 
um, really excited about this project. Um, it's a new design that I'm working on and I kind of, my idea, this was my swatch. <laughs> and this motif, if you recognize it, it is from my Ironwood hat. Um, so this was kind of all over on the Ironwood hat. And I wanted to make a big um, rectangular shawl that kind of tied in with that hat. Um, when I cast it on, I want it to be kind of big and thick. I have exaggerated that motif a little bit. So it's curling because it hasn't been blocked, obviously. I'm still working on it. <laughs> but I've exaggerated that motif a little bit and then omitted the stockinette parts. So it's just this twisted stitch relief on reverse stockinette background. And oh man, yeah, it's just showing up beautifully there. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. I When I cast it on, I had cast on and done the twisted, like the border, and I had done about this much, and I was kind of, ooh, iffy, iffy about it. It just, I don't know, it's hard to tell with something, especially with such a big, big motif, um, how it's how it's actually turning out. So sometimes you just got to power through a little bit. <laughs> so I took this to our, our knit morning that we have and um, did about... I don't know, a couple more hours on it. And I think I knit like this much while I was there. And now I'm totally, totally in love with it. It's so silky too. It's just one of those like, I mean, there's nothing special in it, but it, <laughs> it is special. That's what I'm, you know, it's, it's merino yarn, but it feels just so drapey and so lovely. And I can't wait for this to be done. I don't know if there'll be tassels or or fringe or something at the edge. I haven't really decided yet. Um, this is kind of one of those projects where I'm just going to see where it goes and what it wants to do. Right now, I feel like I don't really need to, um, but <laughs> at, like looking at her yarns when I had them all wound up and together, there wasn't any obvious... Um, like so especially with hand dyed like speckly yarn usually there's some variance and there was a little bit but not like not anything super noticeable still alternate your skeins <laughs> even if it looks like they're the same alternate your skeins um and i right now i'm alternating three skeins because that's how i do <laughs> i i really don't mind if if the edges were going to be hidden somehow, like if I was going to do some sort of applied border or something after the fact, then I would just do alternate with two skeins and do back and forth switch, back and forth switch. But then you end up with um, all of your floats kind of up one side and not up the other. And when I do that, my tension is not very good when I, when I do that. So it always ends up that they're different. I don't like it. <laughs> so I alternate three skeins um, just so that I can knit one row, switch, knit one row, switch, and then everything is all like it's on both sides instead of just one side. And then when I get finished, I guess I'll just work with, with one yarn and then that'll be fine. <laughs> But yeah, so that is coming along very nicely. And that is literally my only work in progress aside from my scrap blanket, but scrap blankets don't count. Um, the other, I do have two projects that I am going, going to be casting on though. So I'll talk a little bit about those, not too much. The first one, this is gonna be my at-home project. So it is in my at-home project bag. This is my lone larch bag that I got at Knit City. Um, and it's just simple like wax. It's really, really pretty dark green wax canvas. And then her logo here, which I think is really cute. Um, leather handles and some birch trees inside. And I like this one because it stands up. So that's why it lives in my house because it just sits on my coffee table. And what I am going to make are these guys. These are the Underwing Mitts by Erica Hauser. And I picked up last weekend 
some of this. And this is Lamana Como. It is Pim yarn. 100% wool. But okay. So I went to 88 Stitches to drop off some books. And I was like, I'm just going to drop off the books. I don't have to buy anything. I don't need anything. And sure enough, I found some yarn for some socks that might be a present. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that too much. But um, as I was like, the, this store was pretty empty. Um, so we were just chatting and I was standing at the till and they had a, they had this yarn kind of in baskets and then they had a little hat that was knit up in it. And I was standing there talking to them and I was just like, I was just stroking this hat. Like, it was so soft and so beautiful. And I, it was a good five minutes that we were talking and I was just like petting this hat. And I was like, okay, like what is this yarn? Um, and it is this. So it is very soft. They, it was a little color work hat. It looked super cute. So I decided to pick up a couple skeins and I was gonna do some, um, like some Norwegian style knit, like um, mittens. Cause I've never, I've never really made some like that, but I had this in my brain um, because I remember seeing this. It was a very popular pattern. I think it is still a popular pattern, but I had it in my hand as mittens. Um, turns out they're fingerless gloves, which is, I was debating changing them and making them into what I want, but I think I'm just going to do this. I think these will get more wear because I wear fingerless gloves all the time. And I really, I literally only have this. <laughs> so I, I would have to go and buy more yarn if I was to do that. So I'm just gonna stick with this. And then um, I printed it in black and white so you can't really see, but um, there's this motif here. And then for the wings, um, if you see that lighter gray there, that's actually like a pop of color. So whatever color you want. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna use yet, but something fun. And then you just duplicate stitch that on top afterwards. So that's gonna be my second project. And then my third one is gonna be Justin's sweater. And <laughs> I talked about this yarn and I talked about how we got it and I didn't show it. But now that I'm actually starting, I will show you. So I got, he, I took him to the yarn store because he had a particular color in mind. And I could have picked, like I knew the color that he wanted, but he was terrible at describing it. So that's why I couldn't get it. <laughs> so this is Drops Nord Mix. And this is color 11. And it's showing up kind of weird. But it's um, basically, it's orange and it's kind of like a heathered orange with some yellow and some red in it. Um, it has, it is a um, wool alpaca nylon. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> the last time I knit a sweater with alpaca, I don't know how well it turned out. It was also like one of my first sweaters, but. I did a swap because I'm going to be holding this yarn double. It's a fingering weight yarn. I'm going to hold it double. And I think it's going to be really nice. It feels very lovely. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be a sweater. I'm not going to use a pattern for it. I made him a Field Henley last year. It was fingering weight. Um, he wears it all the time. So he just wants like a basically another Henley. And I feel like I can do that just from my brain. So <laughs> I'm gonna take his measurements probably tonight and um, do a little bit of math. What I'm gonna do, because he wants, um, he kind of wants this as an accent. So the cuffs and the hem and maybe some of the like shoulder bits. Uh, this is Wild in the Woods and it is wild wool. It's just a rustic single ply um, natural wool. And then this is lichen and lace um, and they're rustic heather sport in the ash colorway. So kind of dark gray. And I'm thinking of doing some sort of like corrugated ribbing or two color ribbing um, with these, kind of with that. 
well, that's what that's what he wanted. So I think what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna construct the sweater is I'm going to, I'm gonna knit it in the round, bottom up, but I'm going to provisionally cast on the bottom and I'm gonna start with this and then work my way up and then do do all the body and then do the shoulders and stuff. And then he can try it on and it can, like I can add or take away length if I need to. Um, I think that will make things a little easier. And then I'm just gonna pick up stitches around the armholes and do um, like a short row sleeve cap. That seemed to work great on his last sweater. So we're gonna do it again. <laughs> it fit him nicely, it was easy. Um, yeah, and I'm very excited to, well, he's very excited, which makes me very excited to work on this for him. So we bought out all of the yarn from 88 Stitches um, because there wasn't, there wasn't quite enough for his sweater and he thought it would be really cute to for me to make George and him matching sweaters and I also think that's really cute <laughs> um, so I also I found some online um, at a yarn store in Campbell River and um, had eight more skeins shipped they're different dye lots and I can you you can tell a little bit <laughs> like if you hold them side by side one is slightly more vibrant and has a little bit more yellow and red in it, um, you won't be able to tell really, I don't think. But if you hold them side by side, like if I was to do, if you were to knit it and then just switch, you would be able to tell probably, I would anyways. But I'm holding yarns double, so I've just marked half of them as one dye lot, half of them are the other dye lot, I'm just gonna throw them together and it's gonna be fine. Uh, yeah, so hopefully I'll start that. And then those will be my three projects. And I think that'll be, and then on November 1st, I'm gonna start another pair of socks. Um, and then those will be the projects that I work on. And hopefully, I think it's gonna work. I think it'll be good. Because then there's, there's a little bit of variety. There's one like that I'm gonna have to concentrate on and two that I can kind of take out with me and and work on at, at varying points like at this um the shawl is very easy to work on while I'm talking and stuff and the body of this is going to be really easy the only like the only funny parts are going to be when it's time to do the shoulders and stuff but I have to do that at home anyways so I think it's a good I think it'll be a nice variety of of things and then all three of those things will get finished you know, in a timely manner. And I'm already thinking about what the next three are gonna be. Because um, <laughs> one is definitely gonna be George's sweater. And then there's a hat that I wanna do. That's it, Moss. Um, yeah, that's it for knitting. So for my life stuff, what's been going on, much. <laughs> I was talking to someone the other day and it was like, yeah, I think Georgia has more of a life than I do because she has, we took her to, we did go on a field trip to the pumpkin patch. Um, so Justin took the day off work and then we both volunteered um, as parent volunteers for the field trip. So that was fun. Um, <laughs> and Justin had a he wanted to like just go and hang out with Georgia. And I was like, no, like you can't do that. If, if you're going with the, with the school, like you're volunteering and you're helping. So we, you know, we had a little group of kids that we had to watch and I think he, he was a little scared of it, but I was like, no, it'll, it'll be okay. Like, it'll be fine. <laughs> and he was just intimidated, but it was, it was all good. Everyone had a really fun time. And um, Georgia had a lot of fun. It was pouring rain, which was great. Um, <laughs> It was like torrential at some points, but I don't know. I, I love doing things like that in the rain. And I'm just a BC girl, I guess. But <laughs> got married in the rain, pumpkin patch in the rain. I, I just remember like going to the pumpkin patch, I think it was last year, and it was really hot outside, and it just didn't feel right. So I was like, yes, like, let's, just, let's just go in the rain. Um, oh, <laughs> except for... I guess her pumpkin kind of got knocked around a bit. And so it was sitting on our table here and 
a couple days ago, I noticed it was getting very soft and spongy. Um, it was not going to make it until Halloween. So I, today, after I dropped George off, I had some errands to go do. So I popped in at, there's a pumpkin farm just down the street. So I popped in there and I got, got a replacement pumpkin and switched them. And I don't think she's going to notice. So I feel like, you know, I feel like I just replaced a dead goldfish. <laughs> I know she would be so sad if her pumpkin was rotten, you know, when we went to go carve it. So just easier. <laughs> you just get a new one, switch it. Um, yeah, and then she's going to camp. She's going to camp this weekend. So I have, um, she's going for two nights. I think I'm just about done winding up all the mini schemes for the swap. So um, probably on Saturday afternoon, that's gonna be my, my thing. I'll be making, um, making all the mini skiing sets. So that's gonna be fun, fun Saturday. And I mean, that's something that George would probably like doing too, but I think she would get sick of it very quickly and then be bored. So I'll just do it when she's not, when she's not here. She's gonna have so much fun at camp. <laughs> and we're not gonna know what to do with ourselves the whole weekend without her. Anyways, um, I hope everyone has a good and fun and safe Halloween coming up and carve some pumpkins and go to a pumpkin patch and do all those fun things. <laughs> have some pumpkin pie. I don't know. Anyways, I hope you all have a great week and I will see you next week. Don't forget to check out the Rainforest Knit Along. There's going to be some prizes in there. And um, also the Pip and Pin Knit Along in the 88 Stitches. Anything else I need to mention? November 23rd, Bell Yards. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you later. Have a good week. Bye.